Welcome back to the final leg. Now, my name is Anderson, and today we're talking about the weekly athlete spotlight where we're gonna be highlighting a couple athletes who had some amazing performances over the past weekend, but probably haven't gotten as much recognition as they truly do deserve. First off, we have to talk about Matthew Hudson Smith. Now, competes for Great Britain. He's been one of the top 400 meter runners for Great Britain and really in the world for the past couple years. But at the Prefontaine Classic this past weekend, we saw Michael Norman run 43.6. We saw um, uh, Karani James, he ran 44 flat. Um, Matthew Hudson Smith finished right behind them too. In third place, 44.35 seconds. That is a personal best. That is a British national record that makes him number six in the world this year and is only two hundredths of a second off the European record set all the way back in 1987. Matthew Hudson Smith really cementing himself here. Like I noted, British, British national record, which was set by um, Ewan Thomas back in 1997. Um, and Thomas was one of the greatest 400 meter runners, you know, during the 1990s while Matt, uh, Michael Johnson was dominating. So for Matthew Hudson Smith to break that br British national record, improve his personal best, which was set all the way back in 2016, running 44.48 seconds, dropping it down to 44.35. Now, 44.35 isn't going to, you know, probably get you any medals. It's not going to get you any fanfare. It's one of the reasons I'm kind of highlighting it here. It's showing some great improvement. Of course, we have Michael Norman. Of course, we have Karani James. Of course, we have Steven Gardner, Anthony Zambrano, Michael Cherry. A plethora of guys are in that 400. But why Matthew Hudson Smith deserves some recognition is because of the progress that he's showing. He just won the Birmingham Diamond League um, just last week, right before the Prefontaine Classic. He ran 45.3, so nothing too crazy. But for him to come back, run this 44.35, mix it up with some of the top guys in the world, this shows that he's ready to, you know, not only remain consistent, but step it up to the next level and possibly get down to that 44 flat, maybe break into that sub 44 second range and really tussle it up. If you're running sub 44 seconds, might get you a medal. We have a couple guys who are sub 44, but I think Matthew Hudson Smith showing that he's ready to take that another, um, take that step up to the next level. So definitely keep a lookout for him and what he's been able to do. We're going to jump over to the women's side now and over into the jumps. We have Akila Smith from Jamaica. Now she competes for Texas and at the West preliminary rounds for the NCAA in the triple jump, she jumped 14.08 meters. That was a personal best. It's the NCAA leader outdoors in 2022. And it's also number 12 NCAA all time in the triple jump. And she is behind some amazing names. This is a huge performance for Smith. And I think it definitely deserves some recognition, right? Again, NCAA leader. Most importantly, she is only a freshman. If she's jumping 14 meters and she's only a freshman, imagine what's going to be happening in the next couple years as she continues to refine her form and her technique and, of course, get stronger and much more experienced. This is also the number seven performance in Jamaican, well, the number, number seven performer in Jamaican history. So, you know, tussling it up with some of the top Jamaican athletes. Of course, there's Shanika Ricketts. Of course, there's Kimberly Williams. There's a couple other ladies who are still jumping, but I think this bodes very well for Smith, not only to potentially make it to the NCAA, the top of the podium in the NCAA, there's a, you know, definitely some really strong ladies in the NCAA, but she might be able to make it onto the Jamaican national team to go to the world championships. And after that, who knows, right? Behind you, Lamar Rojas, there's a plethora of women who are really jumping. 1408 might not get you, you know, onto the podium, but I think this bodes well. Again, she's only a freshman indoors. She actually jumped 13.94 uh, 94 meters. So this is not a performance that's completely out of anywhere, right? Completely out of nowhere. She's been very, very consistent. Already on the cusp of that 14 meter barrier, she just broke into it now. Definitely keep a lookout for Akila Smith from Jamaica competing for Texas, especially going into those NCAA championships in just about two weeks' time. Now, two other athletes I want to highlight. We have to talk about Quincy Hall from the United States. Now, Quincy Hall, I don't know why he fell off the radar. Well, I understand why, but I think people really need to be giving him a lot more recognition. In 2019, he won the NCAA championships in the 400-meter hurdles. He set his personal best that year, um, running um, in the 400 meter hurdles, he managed to run 48.48 seconds. He got um, injured, unfortunately, after that. Of course, we had COVID. Um, he tried out for the Olympic trials uh, last year, unfortunately, crashed and hit a hurdle, got injured as well. This year has been a huge comeback season for Quincy Hall. In the 400 meter hurdles, already, 
In April, he managed to run 48.55 seconds, just on the cusp of breaking his personal best of 48.48. Then, April 30th, that was April 15th, April 30th, he ran 48.51 seconds. Again, improving on the cusp of breaking his personal best. At the Prefontaine Classic, just this past weekend, he managed to run 48.10 seconds. That is a huge performance, a huge personal best, and a huge improvement on what he's been doing. This is why I say he really does deserve some recognition. He's a 2019 NCAA champion. Think of the field of the men's 400 meter hurdles. Behind Rye Benjamin, it's pretty wide open, right? I definitely have to note Khalifa um, Roser. He finished um, in second place just ahead of uh, Quincy Hall at the Prefontaine Classic, but they both were in the same time. So, you know, we're, we're kind of splitting hairs here. Quincy Hall, I think, is one that we really need to keep an eye out for. He might be able to get onto that USA team to uh, in the 400 meter hurdles to compete in Eugene later on in July. So definitely keep a lookout for him. I actually got to spoke with, speak with him at the Prefontaine Classic. He's talking about he has a lot of motivation. You know, he has a, a family now. He's really hungry to get back um, into the form that he was before. And he's already showing it now with his personal best. So Quincy Hall, definitely one to keep a lookout for and definitely deserves some recognition. Finally, let's talk about Gabby Cunningham. Now, this is a little bit different. I mean, Gabby Cunningham in the 100 meter hurdles, she's definitely been, you know, a little bit in the spotlight. She won USA indoors in the 60 meter hurdles. She went to the world championships indoors and uh, got the bronze medal in Belgrade in the 60 meter hurdles. She also made it to the Tokyo Olympic final last year in the 100 meter hurdles, finishing seventh place. But at the Prefontaine Classic here, she actually ran 12.77 seconds. Now, that's not going to get you any medals, right? That's not a crazy performance, and that's not even one of the top performances at Prefontaine, right? She finished, um, you know, down in the pack. But why is this significant? Well, that's a season's best time for Gabby Cunningham, and this is a time that's right about around where she was at last year. And what did I just say last year? She made it to the Tokyo Olympic final. Kenny Harrison, the other American to make it into the final, she, of course, got the silver medal in Tokyo. But Christina Clemens, she just missed out on making it to the final. Gabby Cunningham was the one who made it. And remember, Gabby Cunningham almost didn't even make it to the Tokyo Olympic Games, right? Uh, we remember Brianna Rollins McNeil. She unfortunately had a little bit of controversy. She wasn't able to, she finished second at um, Olympic trials. She unfortunately wasn't able to compete in Tokyo. Gabby Cunningham was given that spot. She made it all the way to the final. So this 12.77 seconds really bodes well, I think, for what she's going to be able to do for the rest of the season. Now, do not get me wrong. The women's 100-meter hurdles is extremely stacked, especially when we're talking about the 100-meter hurdles in the United States. There are a plethora of women, everyone from Tonia Marshall, right? Uh, Kenny Harrison, of course, Grace Stark from Florida. Uh, I think she unfortunately might be injured, but Nia Ali, Tia Jones, right? Aliyah Armstrong. There are so many women in the 100-meter hurdles just in the United States. It's going to be tough to make that team. I didn't even mention Christina Clemens, who made the Olympic team last year, right? But I think this bodes well for Gabby Cunningham. This is really showing that she's, you know, rolling into form. We're getting close to USA's um, in June. And of course, we have world championships in the middle of July. So keep a lookout for Gabby Cunningham and what she might be able to do. So those are the athletes that we wanted to highlight for today. There are so many athletes that definitely deserve some recognition that probably didn't get spoken about on this entire weekend. But we're going to keep coming back every single week to highlight a couple of these athletes and just talk through, give them a little bit of shine, and hopefully we're going to see them as they progress through the season. They may not make it to the world championships. They may make it to the world championships, but we're going to keep following them along as they make progress. So make sure you keep following us. Make sure you keep tuning in, and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.